to Rocky Railway. I'm Miss Karen and I'm your conductor on this adventure. I'm so excited to help you learn how Jesus' power pulls us through every day. Let's start by singing a song together. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Railway, we're imagining what it would be like to travel by steam train through the mighty, majestic Rocky Mountains. Those mountains go from way up in Canada all the way down through New Mexico. Everywhere we go, remember that Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust Jesus! No matter what twists and turns life has in store. How about we try something? Come on, come on up here, Pastor Trevor. Pastor Trevor is our family life pastor at BNC. Let's imagine that the balloon he is holding is you. Wait, you don't look like a balloon. Why don't you stand up and put your arms out so you're shaped more like a balloon. Let's fill our balloons with some joy and gladness and good things. What makes you happy? Call it out. Ooh, it's your birthday. That fills you up a bit. You got a new pet? Fills you up a little more. Oh, I like this one. You had pizza for dinner? Yum! Looks like you're getting pretty full. But life isn't always full of those good things. We may feel sad when someone says something mean to us. We might get discouraged when we didn't do as well as we hoped on a test. And some days we may feel there is no hope at all. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad 
that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> Jesus doesn't just fill us with happy things. Jesus' power is deeper and stronger than that. The Bible says, So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Jesus' power does that for us. And he does it in us. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. And with hope, our hearts can fly. Pastor Trevor, will you open the knife for us in prayer? Yeah. Let's pray, boys and girls. Close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thanks for being our best friend. Thank you that we can have a great hope in you and that we can trust in you. Give us a great week here at Vacation Bible School. We love you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Trevor. I am so thankful that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! I wonder what amazing Bible memory buddy will help us remember our Bible point today. Let's go see! Glad you're back on track at Rocky Railway! Wow, the first day just flew by, didn't it? I'm Ava, a red-tailed hawk. You can find me and my family members all over North America. We're everywhere. Even though we live all across North America, you may not see me in your backyard. <laughs> well, unless you don't have any neighbors. We like to live in wide open spaces where we can soar over treetops, grass, and water looking for food. You might say that red-tailed hawks are faithful friends. When we find a mate, we stay together for life. My fine-feathered friend and I build our nests together and care for our chicks together. We're an excellent team. I'm happiest way up in the sky. That's why I build my nest at the tallest point I can find. Some hawk nests have been spotted as high as 120 feet off the ground. That's as high as a human tower of 20 tall crew leaders. My nest might be at the tip top of a tree, or even on the top of a building or a telephone pole. That gives me a bird's eye view of what's around, food, friends, or animals that might want to hurt us. Ah, I love soaring with my big, beautiful wings. They're more than three feet across, you know. God gave me just what I needed to catch the wind and just fly. Up here, you see things differently. Stuff that seemed big seems smaller. Things that seemed harder look much easier. A path that looks like a dead end, hey, I can see a way out. A fresh perspective can put the wind under your wings and give you the strength to keep going. Sometimes I spot you humans with my sharp hawk eyes and you look a little down. Do things seem impossible? Scary? Hopeless? Maybe you need a fresh perspective. Maybe you need to see things Jesus' way, with hope. Jesus is stronger than anything. He has a plan for everything. You can have strength, courage, and hope. The Bible encourages us with these words. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Jesus' power gives us hope. So trust Jesus. Ava reminds us that Jesus' power fills us with hope, letting our hearts be light. Let's sing a song that will remind us of what hope can do for us.
Yesterday, our friend Cam Trap was stuck up here by a rock slide. It was a big problem. I wonder if he and his crew were able to clear all those rocks out of the way. Oh, hey, Cam. I'm glad you stopped by. Give us an update about the rock slide. Well, my crew worked, and I worked, and worked, and we finally got those boulders off the track. But the, those boulders were so heavy that they damaged the track. Fixing the tracks are not our only problem. We're still stuck. Oh, Cam, I'm sure the track will get fixed eventually. Um, eventually is not okay. Do you know what was on that train? Mm, no. There was M&Ms on that train. Do you know how much people love their M&Ms? If those M&Ms are not delivered, people will get upset. Then when they get upset, they'll start to yell. And when they start to yell, I'll get scared because I don't like when people yell at me. So we're going to stay up here forever and hope those angry people don't find me. Then, whew, I lost all my steam there. Well, I'll say... It might take a little while, but the, tr the train tracks will get fixed. And nobody here is mad at you. You're among great friends who think you're pretty cool. The situation seems hopeless. All I want to do is go on my train, blow my whistle, and chug, a and chug away. <whistles> toot, toot. Cam, don't lose hope. Jesus' power gives us hope. How about you pretend you're on your train, you're driving your train? Go to your happy place. Okay, driving my train, happy place. Okay, so, so you're chugging along. Over a bridge, up a mountain, around a bend, into a tunnel. It's dark now, but wait, if you look straight ahead, you'll see a light at the end of the tunnel. Do you see it? Okay, open your eyes. Wow, I really saw it. That's hope! It's like light at the end of a dark tunnel. When things seem dark or hopeless, Jesus' power gives us hope. So even if you're stuck here for a little longer, you can always have hope. It does make a lot of sense to hope in someone who won't, who, who won't let you down, who won't let you down, or get mad about M&Ms. Hey, you guys, I see what you're doing. Stop eating those M&Ms! Put those back! Yikes! It looks like your crew is kind of hungry. Maybe those M&Ms aren't so safe. Stop! Wait! Stop! You guys! Uh, there goes Cam. I hope he's able to protect his precious cargo. We are going to head off to Bible Adventures now, where you will learn about hope in the middle of a storm. Hey! Welcome back, boys and girls. I'm Mr. Frank, and you're here at Bible Adventure. So, day two, and we're going to be looking at another totally true story from the Bible. Now today, we're going to get our feet a little bit wet as we discover how Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Now speaking of hope, I hope we don't run into any problems today. We're going to get on a ship, and I always get a little seasick out on the open sea. You might not want to stand too close, um, but that, that could be a huge mistake. But the weather is actually supposed to be calm, so it sounds like smooth sailing. Are you ready to go aboard? All right, come with me. All right, now, before we get on the boat, there's some important things that we need to do. We gotta take our luggage or our cargo. Now, on old ships back in the day, you had to walk up something called a gangplank, and it was something that was really narrow, and so you had to be very good at balancing to get up onto the ship, all right? So I see some cargo over there. My friend Nate's already started carrying his luggage into the ship, and so I'm gonna go get my boxes, and if you guys were here with me, I'd have you help me, but you could be uh, at home pretending that you have cargo too, okay? So I'll be right back, and I'm gonna go ahead and walk up this plank. Whoa, this stuff is heavy. How you doing, Nate? You get all your luggage in? It's good. Yeah, get the stuff over there. All right. Okay. Oh, all right, heavy. boys and girls, I got my luggage. Now, this is tricky walking up this narrow plank. I, I got to tell you, it's pretty heavy. Now, I just wish there was something that would just be a little bit easier uh, to get this luggage onto the ship because this is pretty heavy stuff. Now, we did a little trick yesterday, and I want to see if that works again today. Boys and girls, on the count of three, would you count with me? One two, three. Whew. Oh, that was a lot easier. Thanks for your help, boys and girls. Oh. <laughs> All right, now that we've got our luggage stowed away on the ship, it's important for us to ch touch base with the ship's captain. Now, if we could only just find that captain, where'd he go? Captain, oh, captain. Woo -hoo. Oh, hey, look, a note. 
You think we ought to read it? Looks pretty important. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. What's it going to hurt? Oh, no. Oh. oh, boys and girls, listen to this. Dear Frank, I'm feeling a little green around the gills today, so I won't be able to sail the ship. But you used to sail, so you be in charge. Have a fun voyage, and thanks for your help, the captain. Oh boy, <laughs> man, it's been a long time since I sailed a ship, but I guess it'll come back to me. Sort of like riding a bike, right? Except wetter, and I, I guess no wheels. All right, well, boys and girls, I need your help. If we're gonna uh, sail this ship successfully, I, it's gonna take a lot of workers to do this right. All right, hmm, I gotta get in the ship. <laughs> I know. One, two, three. Ha, huh, that was a lot easier than I thought. I like that trick. All right, now, boys and girls, I need your help. In order to get this ship to go in the right direction, we've got to hoist the sails. So, everybody, let's go ahead and hoist those sails. Wait, <laughs> those sails look a lot different than the ones I remember, so I, I hope they work. All right, now, matey, we need to swab the deck. You know what that means? Go ahead and mop away. Go ahead, boys and girls, mop, swab that deck. All right, we got one more thing. We're not gonna go anywhere. It doesn't matter if we've got wind or not. We need to pull up the anchor. So go ahead and help me. Everybody help, pull in that anchor. All right, good job. One last thing, fire up the engines. Uh, oh, I forgot. Back in Bible times, they didn't have engines. So. We're going to need to power this ship another way. Does anyone have any ideas? Hmm. Wind. That's a great idea. Except we've got a problem. No wind. Unless Nate's got a lot of hot air, we're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So while we're waiting for the wind to come along, let's just kind of hang out here for a little bit. Tell, tell me something or think about something that you'd like to change in your life but you feel powerless to do anything about it. Well, as for me, I kind of felt powerless about this whole virus thing that was going on. That was scary. You know, whenever I found out someone that I knew got sick or maybe someone that I knew uh, died because of the virus, that was scary. And I didn't, I didn't feel like there was anything that I could do. We were stuck in our homes. We couldn't go to school. We couldn't go to work. So that was kind of a scary thing for me. Now, how about you? Have you ever experienced a bully in your life and, and you wish that that person would go away or maybe a broken friendship or, or maybe a friend of yours moved away? How do you fix something like that? So what is something in your life, boys and girls, where you feel powerless to do anything about it? It's no fun to be powerless. It feels hopeless. But today we're learning about a new kind of power, the power of Jesus. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Whoa, hey boys and girls, look like that, look at that. We, we've got some wind. It looks like we are actually gonna be able to sail today. Now, it should be an easy trip, unless that prisoner chained up down below is right. He said our ship would sink. The cargo was gonna float off and, and that we shouldn't sail at all today. But you know what? He's not a sailor. He doesn't have the experience that I have. Let's not pay any attention to him. Now, his name's Paul. And from what I heard, he's a Christian who got into trouble because he keeps telling people about Jesus after God changed his heart from hating Jesus followers to being a Jesus follower himself. The emperor of Rome doesn't want people following Jesus because the emperor wants people to follow him. But Paul kept talking and now he's off to Rome to stand trial in front of the emperor himself. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be in Paul's shoes <laughs> or actually his sandals. Now, I heard some of you might be Christians too. So if you don't mind, here's a question for you. If you could tell a person who didn't know about Jesus something about him, what would you say? And here's another question to think about. Since Paul was told not to talk about Jesus, and he did it anyway, 
what do you think Paul's punishment should be? Hmm. Well, if you talk about Jesus, you probably won't get chained up and stuck in the bottom of a ship like prisoner Paul down there. Hey, do you guys feel that? Hey, anyone else feel a little bit of rain, mist? Yep, yep, definitely <laughs> rain. I, I, I think it's starting to pick up a little bit. <laughs> I guess it's time to get this ship going. All right, I'm going to go below and check the charts in case we're heading into some bad weather. I'm going to check on Paul while I'm down there, too. And while I'm gone, I want you to think about what our plan should be to get this ship to dry ground. All right, I'll be right back. Oh, man, boys and girls, I got some bad news. Down below, there's water sloshing around. That means we're heading into rough seas. I hope that Paul guy wasn't right about what's coming our way. Things could get really, really rough. Oh, man, I think there's lightning ahead. Oh, my goodness. Can you feel that, boys and girls? The, the wind's picking up. The water, it's starting to get rough. All right, listen. We're only going to get through this if we work together. I need you guys all to lean to the starboard. That's to your right. Now lean to port. That's to your left. All right, to the right, to the left. Oh my goodness, it's getting worse. Throw those boxes overboard. Oh man, woo! Oh my goodness, what's going on? Oh, boys and girls, this is looking terrible. I'm gonna go check to see if Paul's okay. Hunker down till I get back. Whew. Oh man, Paul said that we need to eat. We need to get some food in our bellies because we're gonna need our strength. So I need everybody just to go ahead and grab a snack somewhere in your house. Eat that because you're gonna need to keep your strength up. some good news and I got some bad news. <laughs> what do you want to hear first? All right, well, the bad news is that Paul says the ship's going to go down. It's sinking. But the good news is, is that none of us are going to drown. Paul says that Jesus is going to take care of all of us. You know what? I think I see the shore over there. It's just a little bit hard to see through all the rain. Anyone else see the shore? Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to look and see if we can make it to shore, but I have a tough decision to make. In situations like this, I'm supposed to kill the prisoner so that he won't get away. But, but Paul actually helped us on this trip. In fact, it's probably because of him that we made it this far to begin with. So what do you guys think we should do? Maybe I should let him live. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to let him go. Hey, you down below, unchain the prisoner. Yep, yep, that's right, I said unchain him. Now, boys and girls, let's cut these anchors and make for sure. The storm's getting worse. Oh, oh, boys and girls, where's, where's my deck mate? Nate, Nate, get up here, quick. <laughs> Get in here! What, what were you doing out there? That's very dangerous. All right, boys and girls, we got to get the sails down. So help me pull those sails. Get them down, get them down. What? What would you do that for? You said to get the sails down. Well, what if we need them later? Come on, uh, jump out. Well, now we're really in trouble. All right, on the count of three, we got to jump overboard. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, the storm's getting bigger. How are we gonna, how are we gonna survive? I can't swim. You're out there, who's gonna drive the boat? I don't have any experience. Oh man, boys and girls, my heart's racing. All right. I, 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 gotta, I gotta stand still before my legs give out of me. 
Imagine being on that ship as it splintered under you and you dropped into huge waves crashing against the shore. Lightning flashing, wind howling. It must have been awful. But Paul was right. Not one person on that ship was lost. Not a single person drowned. You know, trusting in Jesus gave them hope in the shipwreck situation. Jesus' power gives us hope in all kinds of situations. How do you think Jesus' power makes a difference? Well, I know that my friendship with Jesus powers hope that I have for this ugly virus that's been out there. It's only because of the hope that Jesus gives me that I know that everything is going to be okay. I'm so glad that I know Jesus. And boys and girls, you can have the opportunity to know Jesus too. I know that praying about my situation, talking with God about it, is helpful. Boys and girls, let's just take a minute and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the hope that you give us. Lord, thank you for teaching us this lesson about um, Paul tonight and, and, and the fact that um, even when things looked rough and the seas were, um, were bad and the wind was howling and the lightning and thunder, um, just the fact that his relationship with you gave him the courage to know and to, and to understand that everything was going to be okay. So Lord, I want to ask a special prayer for my friends online here tonight. Lord, anything it is that might be um, making them uh, scared or understand that um, things just seem like it might be hopeless, Lord, I want to give them this hope that comes with having a relationship with you. Lord, we know that your power gives us hope. In all these things we ask, amen. Boys and girls, remember tonight, Jesus' power will give us hope. Trust Jesus. <laughs> Wow, even in a shipwreck, Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! Did you know that God can use you to bring hope to others? Here is a story about a girl named Annalise who has a special talent that God used to bring hope. My name is Annalise and I'm 11 years old. Annalise is a singer and accordion player. I started playing the accordion at the age of eight years old. She plays a style of traditional Mexican music called Norteño. I love making music because I feel happy when I make music. I feel like I'm like more closer to God because I sing for Him and I play for Him. When she's not playing music, Annalise loves playing basketball with her brothers and taking care of all the animals on the ranch in Arizona where she lives. On our ranch we have horses, pigs, chickens, and goats. My horse's name is Frosty. He's a really nice horse. Sometimes he's really sleepy, he doesn't like to walk. I don't think he sleeps in the night or something, but he's really tired. Annalise didn't know when she started playing music years ago that it would end up being so helpful and bringing hope to her and her grandmother when they went through a hard time. So my grandma was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. As her grandma fought cancer, Annalise and her accordion constantly kept her grandma's spirits up and helped her to keep fighting. Uh, when I played my accordion to my grandma, I would be happy because I would see her happy. She would smile, be like really happy, and my grandpa as well, he would be happy too. I usually play um, one of her favorite songs, which is Let's Praise the Lord, and she loved that song. Annalise sings that song for us. I'm going to use my hands to praise the Lord. I'm going to use my hands to praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. He is wonderful, marvelous, Lord of lords, kings of kings. 
Annalisa and her grandma held on to hope in Jesus, even though times were hard. What brought me hope was that I would always hear her pray. Like in my like opinion, I would be sad when I would see her like drink all those medicines that she would have to drink. But I knew she had hope that God would make a miracle in her. After lots of praying and trusting in Jesus' power, Annalise's grandmother got better. God healed her from cancer. Jesus' power gives us hope means to me like Jesus has love for us. Jesus has the power for us to have hope in him. In the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 24, it says, So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. God's always with you. God loves you. God's here for you. God loves everyone equally. He would love you too. Annalise learned that Jesus' power gives us hope. Hi, I'm Sydney. I'm going to be showing you how to make an obstacle course out of sidewalk chalk. If you don't know what that is, it's this right here. And if you only have one color, you can do it out of one color, or you can pick what colors you want to do it out of. All you need is a sidewalk or a driveway. Just make sure you get permission of, from your parents. So I'm going to show you an example, and you can change it up if you want. Okay, so every obstacle course has a starting point, so you're going to have to draw a starting point from where to start. And then the first stage is hop like a bunny, so you can put like dots or squares or something to put your feet somewhere so then hop like a bunny here. The next point is well I just drew a circle to know where to go but spin five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the next stage is hopscotch. If you don't know what that is, it's one block, then two blocks, and one block and two blocks and one, and it's one through ten. So you hop one one block, you hop on one foot, then two feet, and you keep alternating that so you get to the end. And the next stage is um, you can draw a squiggly line or just draw some type of line to follow. Okay, and then I have a box. Just clap five times. If you want to change that action, you can. Next stage is like leaping, leap stuff, I don't know, the stepping stones. <laughs> and you can jump on them. In the extra space, you can make it, make it blue or whatever color you want and try not to fall off them. Stones. The next stage is like you're going to draw a line of some sort and you're going to run on that line and you're going to jump. So the way you're going to jump, you're going to make some kind of, I don't know, somewhere to tell which number you're on and number one to ten and then you're going to run and jump and stay on that number and whatever number you land on, you come up to the next box and do that many number of jumping jacks. Next, you're going to draw a beam or some another some sort of line and pretend you're walking on a plank. Try not to fall into the alligators. And the Bible point for today was And the Bible point up to for today was Jesus power gives us hope, so when you finish, you're going to scream that or say that. Jesus' power gives us hope. And then you did it. Good job. Okay, so now Dylan is going to go through the obstacle course, but I'm not going to 
say anything this time. Let's see if you can do it. This is how it gives us hope. And Hazel. Oh, and Hazel. Alright, so you go. Okay. Hop like a bunny. Alright, now do your spins. Okay, now one foot. One. Okay, follow the lines. Follow the sunny. It's time to look at today's totally true Bible story. Are you ready? Let's go! Yesterday, we met a man named Saul. God changed his name to Paul and used him to tell lots of people about Jesus. But telling people about Jesus got Paul in trouble. In fact, it got him arrested. Paul was a prisoner on a ship that was sailing for Rome. It was slow sailing for a while because the wind didn't cooperate. In fact, it was getting late in the season for a ship to be sailing on the open seas. Paul was concerned. Paul told the ship's crew that they shouldn't go on, that there would be a shipwreck if they did. But the captain didn't listen. He wanted to keep sailing. At first, only a light wind started blowing. But then, the wind got really strong. The crew quickly pulled in the sails, but that didn't help. The wind was so bad that the captain couldn't steer the ship. The storm went on and on. Finally, they started throwing the cargo overboard. Paul called the crew together. He said God had sent an angel to tell him that the ship would go down, but no one would die. 
Paul's words gave them hope. The storm was so bad that no one had eaten in a while. So Paul told them they'd better eat something before the shipwreck. The next morning, the ship ran aground and started to break up. Paul told everyone who could swim to jump overboard and swim to shore. Those who couldn't swim held onto planks or boards. It was just like the angel said, everyone escaped safely to shore. <laughs> Remember, Jesus' power gives us hope. That was such a great video! We're close to the end of the line for tonight, but first I need to mention our missions offering for Community Table. Some of our friends have already given. Thanks so much! To give, go to our website at birthboronaz.org slash children. Here's what my friends, Miss Donna and Miss Sherry, have to say about Community Table. Donna! Do you hear what's going on at VBS with the offering this year? No, what is it? The kids are going to give their offering nickels, pennies, dimes, quarters, dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever they can give, and it's going to go towards the community table. Oh, what's a community table? Community table is um, people meet at the Birdsboro Fire Company, and our church and all the churches in the community supply them with a hot warm meal nice to fill their bellies all up good that sounds great yeah. yeah and the money that the kids give is going to make a meal for them maybe hot dogs maybe hamburgers who knows who knows how much money these kids are going to give during vbs wow that's so cool and how will the people at the community table know where it came from we're going to put little stickers on all the desserts and you know everybody loves desserts so oh, everybody yes. will take a dessert and it's going to say Donated by Birdsburg Nazarene VBS Kids! 2020! Yay! The money we are raising will help so many people. Thank you. It's been a rocking day on the rails. Being your conductor is traptastic. Let's wrap our day with one last fun song and then a message of hope. Remember, Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. Okay now, let's bring it down. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train. This train. This train. <laughs> wow, we learned so many wonderful things about Jesus' power today. Are you wondering how to get on track with Jesus and let him come aboard your life? It's as easy as knowing the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you have done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. 
Trust that you are forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you made this decision today, make sure to tell a trusted adult. We would love to hear about it at BNC. This is the most important decision you can make. Jesus' power pulls us through.